Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Oh my gosh, you'd think I'd be getting used to this, but then I get so nervous every time. <sighs> um, anyway, thanks for all your questions and your paintings and your comments. And wow, it's really great to uh, see people are painting. Um, whew, I had nervousness. I don't know, but like, anyway. I have to forget that I'm doing this. <laughs> um, I, I want to say before I even start, uh, I want to thank my sister Leslie very, very much. You know, she's had my back since we were little kids and she's, she like does all the things that an adult is supposed to do, like pay bills and order things. And some of this paint today here is hers because I've run out and my tubes are so empty. Look, I like have to stand on them to get any, paint out of here. <laughs> Just do it like that and, and I a little bit of paint. So I'm, I'm getting desperate here. Look at all these. So we're going to paint today uh, and we're going to paint on Sunday and then next week we're going to do collage. Um, or if I can get some paint, I was thinking of doing portraits, self-portraits maybe. It's always a great subject to go to when you don't know what else to paint. Um, okay, before we start, I'm gonna tell my little story. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'm gonna keep my hand gloves up while I talk. Um, one of the questions that was asked last week, one of my favorite questions that was asked, there was two, but was who is my greatest influence and i said fritz boltman and that is very true in a very special way he taught me about drawing and he was he was he believed in me but i thought about it a lot this week and i just want to say that the most important influence in my life has been my mother she is an incredibly great painter. I don't know anyone in the world that works as hard as she does. Um, paint, she's still, she's 87 and she's painting right now. She paints every day, huge canvases, little painting, little paintings, but she paints and works and works. Um, so I'm gonna tell a little story about her. I'm gonna to start today and finish the story on Sunday. So, my mother, at 21, met my father here in Provincetown on the wharf. He was coming off a Coast Guard boat, and she was she was a wild woman, beautiful. She was wrapped in fishing nets and big hoop earrings and scarves and color, and selling tickets to go whale watching. And my father saw her, and she saw him, and that was it. A year later, they got ma married, and within seven years they had five children now I should have I, I meant to back up so I'm gonna back up to her childhood real quick and just fill you in on this my mother when she was young took some painting classes from Jerry Farnsworth who was a teacher here in Provincetown and he went to she loved it she loved it she was great and she went to her father and wanted, it was time for her to go to college and said, please, can I go to art school? I want to paint. And he, this man, the teacher, and her father and her had a discussion. And they thought it was best that she doesn't go to art school, that she goes to Katie Gibbs Typing School because she's just going to get married and have kids. So that's what happened. She never had any formal training. She went to Katie Gibbs and... <laughs> learn how to type, but, and then the five kids, which brings me to now, the part, this part of the story. So my mother had these five kids and she, we lived in the summer on a place called Sandy Neck. It's seven miles of the peninsula in the Barnstable Harbor. And at the very end, there's about 24 houses. There's no electricity, no running water, and we were just, this pack of kids and a bunch of adults. And that's where my mother first started painting. I remember I was about 10 years old um, and she started with acrylic on little pieces of driftwood. 
these beautiful little seascapes, beautiful little paintings, and she kept working and working and working. And when my father decided, well, she should have a show, so he got a bunch of shingles and wrote invitations for the 20 houses that were there, and he handed them out, and we had an opening, and my mother sold every single painting for $5, $10, $20, and uh, yeah, and that was a lot of money for her back then, because my father was a teacher and didn't make much. Um, okay, well, fast forward from that, she just kept painting. Um, when I was in high school, when I was young, I was, uh, what she, how she first started was going to street shows. So I would make batiks and she would do her painting. She started painting on uh, boards and canvas. And we would go to these sidewalk shows and sit on the sidewalk for like 10 or 12 hours. Her with her beautiful paintings and me with my batiks. And we would just be so excited because every Sunday we went home with some money in our pocket and we had a wonderful time. Um, she then, um, had her first big show in Princeton, New Jersey, and it was just, she just got better and better and better. And I think she was about 38 when she started painting. Um, hardest worker. And as I told you from the beginning of this class, that the most important thing about painting, making a good painting, or being a good painter, Forget making a good painting, just being a good painter means discipline, stamina, fearlessness, and the truth. If you keep those things forefront in your mind while painting, you are going to end up with some good paintings. You're going to make a hell of a lot of bad ones. I do. I have a stack of paintings over there that are so ugly. I might even show you at the end of the class how bad I can paint. <laughs> God. It's horrible. Um, anyway, that I'm going to continue my mom's story on Sunday because it gets very interesting. Um, anyway, love you, mom, uh, and love you, Leslie, and love to all my kids and all my family. This is really a family thing, and yeah, we're all here in it together. Yeah. We're all in it together. Okay, so we're going to pick up from last week. Anybody that wasn't here, maybe you have this canvas or you have a new one. Um, the people that are new, um, I tell everybody that during this class, I highly suggest that you stand. I'm going to say it every time that you stand up because it's a very physical process the way I paint. And uh, so... You could, I couldn't do this just sitting down, okay? You need to be able to move. You need to be able to step in and step out. So even if you're not painting right now and you're just watching uh, and you're sitting down on the couch or whatever, please stand up. Stand up, get your body moving, um, and move with me. I said that before, but move with me today as I'm painting because it really, it, it brings some sort of, wonderful energy uh, up from the earth, up, 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 all the way through to the sky. So, okay, this painting. I have worked on this a little bit this week from last week. Um, it's in a stage of God knows what. Um, I was thinking of maybe working a little bit on this with you today, if you have it. You, uh, yeah, let's pull it up. We're gonna work on this for a little while, and then we're, Emma's here. It's gonna be her last day here, but she's here, and she's going to, even though the light isn't right, she's gonna take that pose again. Uh, and I'm not gonna be able to get the light in it, but we can get the drawing and kind of finish the composition, okay. So here we are, yellow. What is this painting about? You know, that's a question that you have to ask yourself continuously. What is the painting about? And it should be about two things. It should be about the plasticity, as I spoke before, about the basics, the composition, the color, the line, um, 
It has, and what is that, what is most important? There's just so many different elements, open line, closed line, which I'm gonna teach you in the drawing class. Uh, how colors push and pull. Um, I wanna tell you that when you're painting, or when I'm painting, when I'm painting, the, the one of the goals is to have everything on the canvas vibrate. So if I turn this canvas like this, you would, you would see all of these things, these colors, these lines, vibrating, pulsating, coming in and out, just about this far. Nothing going way, way back and nothing coming completely forward. So this is Hans Hoffman's idea. If you want to pick up one of his books and of course Fritz. But for example, um, I'm looking at this right now. So what, if this flower is coming too far forward, I would, so it, there's always, there's a lot of battles going on, right? So one of them is to keep the surface activated. Um, so how do I push back yellow? I could do this. And this is, the, this doesn't have to end, I do a lot, this doesn't have to end up in the final painting. I make a lot of marks just to get in touch and move things. Like I'll take this brown and go right over that flower, right? So it pushes it back. But that doesn't have to stay there. That can just live there for a moment because I'm pushing that back with this mark. And then I'm gonna go over here because that's enough. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute and just see how it feels to me. Then I'm gonna come over here and deal with this shape and as I said before it's a shape we could say it's a flower we could say it's a candle but you really try to think about it as a color a light or a dark and a shape so let's see what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to get some kind of get this get this so you know it's difficult because there's a lot going on in here and Simplifying, simplifying is really the way to go. Uh, but in the beginning, and this is still the beginning stages. So this line I just made here, it's really what I'm looking at, only this maybe one inch long, what I can see. But I paint through, I paint through it, right? So that I'm not, doing this little thing like this. I paint through it, all right? And here's another example of painting through. I'm gonna go back to the flowers and come back to that. So instead of, you know, making this perfect little stab or shape of green, right? I'm gonna just, cause it really needs to open up more. I'm gonna start up here. Actually, I'm going to start all the way at this edge because this edge really is not very interesting. And as we've talked about, the edges are extremely important, that they're all activated and that your eye is continuously going around the whole canvas. Uh, this is a journey for me to paint, and I want it to be a journey for someone who is looking at the painting. So that you just... so. My, what I want from my viewer is somebody that looks at the painting and then looks and then sees more and then sees more and things are revealed. They're not just in your face, okay? Uh, and so here we go. This is going to be this step. So it comes down, to, oh, it's too much wax in there. It doesn't even make a mark. Okay, let me get this. Sometimes, now remember, this is oil paint mixed with wax. We are going to do just simple, wonderful oil painting, just with linseed and turpenoid. Okay, so I'm going to, this is the, this is one of the stems. Again, I'm going to start from here and all the way down. Okay? And this line too, it's just too short. Like just bring, I'm going to bring it all the way through. Okay. So, and this line isn't straight, but 
and I think it should be straight. Uh, really important to have geometric shapes happening amidst organic shapes. So there's another battle. I don't want it to be too geometric and I don't want it to be too organic. So I'm going to make this straight. Okay. People might be, oh, it was pretty before. What are you doing? You know, this is the thing about painting and when it comes to fearlessness. The minute you fall in love with something on, in your painting and keep it there because you love it, you end up painting the whole painting to just go to this, to relate to this one thing. And I don't care how beautiful it is, if you painted it once, you can paint it again. And there comes a point where you just have to get rid of it because you're trying to save it. Saving something never works. It's like holding on to something, like holding on to something in life. You need to let go, let go, let go. There's so much letting go and letting things reveal themselves, as my mother would say. <laughs> just like in life, let it reveal. I'm just looking, looking, looking um, right here. And I'm going to do something else right now because I just made two vertical lines. I'm going to go horizontal here with some of this white. And it's really, this is way too white, but I want to just light, lift this painting. So, but it's there. And over here. And I'm going to take this, the table stops here, right? I don't know where it stops over there, but I'm going to just take this line, okay, I'm going to go right through the base, back, right, right through the base. All right, now you're like, what the hell is she doing? <laughs> um, but what I'm doing is, is I'm, it's, I'm breathing, bringing back breath uh, and not letting myself get stuck anywhere. And I'm trying to just Lift, lift, lift the painting up. Now watch. So I'm going to keep some of this white. I'm going to keep, watch this. We'll show you now. So now that I've made those three marks, and I do like to work with three lines and then three darks, then three lights, because I feel like that really works for me in term of, terms of composition and moving around the canvas, okay? So really it's like this move, this move, and this move, and then there's a small one here. Okay, where is my this tool? Oof, I fall in love with tools. <laughs> I get like completely dependent on a tool. And I, my, my friend Jen who used to pose for me for about 20 years. I was working with a palette knife back then and I was like, tch, 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 tch. she said, you have got to get rid of that palette knife. And I'm like, tch, 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 tch. <laughs> So she came over, like, this was months of palette night. That, I mean, the paintings look beautiful, but, but she came over and she took this out of my hand and she threw it out the window. <laughs> so, yeah, we can't depend on the tools. Okay, so now I'm going to cut into this. Okay, so what I want, I'm going to have a piece of white on this vase, but I'm going to get rid of all of this. You can do it with a rag. Okay. So this is going to be the light inside of the base, but see how you go in and just paint that light. I want like this, and I'm going to pick this light up uh, in other places. It's going to be it's going to be part of the table. Okay, see now there's this, there's this. See how I move my whole body? If you're trying to make a mark like this, it does. It's not going to tell you. It's, again, it's your voice. What is it? How does it move? Okay, so that's there. And this one over here I put, but I don't want it at all. No. Okay. Now, this line here that was the candle right here, is, I'm going in and make that little, what is it, the teapot? Yeah, it's a teapot. <laughs> I have these wonderful objects 
that I've been collecting over the years. And they all have a story. And uh, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna watch. So that's, <laughs> that's the candle holder, just part of it. It's just, like I said, only about two inches here. But I'm gonna go over that and make this pot, this teapot. More blue. Okay, now I am so lost. I'm lost. It's like, oh, oh, what am I doing? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm doing, but I'm reacting to what I did, right? So there's a time to make a move and make it extraordinary. Make an extraordinary mark. And then there's a time to sit back and just reevaluate, reevaluate. Is it honest? Is it working? Is it not working? What do I want? What is it about? Is it light? Is it dark? Is it about yellow? Is it about green? Um, for me right now, I think it's from, it's about the light. And really the movement, I don't know, before, I don't know if you saw this early in the class when I was, we was silent, but I took a charcoal and I made a big circle this way, right? And then I made another circle this way in the opposite direction because when I look at this still life, it really is about the circle. <laughs> and then inside that circle is mer emerging these yellow daffodils. And this is a circle. So, Wow, okay, let's see. Oh, what a beautiful color that is, isn't it? Oh, cerulean, this is cerulean blue. Very, very beautiful color. Tough, it's tough to, to uh, I'm gonna put some light on this. It's tough to mix colors with this cerulean blue. There's certain colors that are very mixable and there's other colors that are better just slightly mixed okay so there's I'm trying to build this thing again building it I'm building it instead of just drawing it even though you don't think I want to go in there as hard as and I am now I'm just gonna go exactly opposite of everything I said because because I can I need perfect time for this this is that wash. I, I have, I'm going to come back with drawing. I mean, you could just paint, paint on paint, wet paint on wet paint, and just keep painting, painting, painting. And that's a really wonderful way to paint, too. This is a different method. Uh, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do a painting that you don't take anything off. You just keep adding, and you think it's going to get money, but it doesn't. And you never draw. You just put color next to color next to color, and then the things emerge. But this painting does have a lot of drawing in it. And I'm going to draw this right now because I just want to. And I want to know where this thing is. I want, I want to see this. See, look, it's so. <laughs> and then if I do that there, okay, you know. I have to do something over here, right? I have to. And here we go, off on another. <sighs> okay, now I'm really gonna make that circle more strong. I really like that idea of this, right? See, and then, so there's a line, right? I interrupt that line. I interrupt that line. And as I said to you the other day, the other thing that's really a beautiful thing to do, which I didn't do on this just now, but is make that straight line, right? And then make that circle or curve. I'm gonna come. See, I was gonna start here, but I really want the sense that this one's gonna come here and it's gonna go right into this line and then come here. Now, there's the candle, <laughs> right here. This is the candle, look. And again, I'm gonna go way outside the candle, 
with the drawing because the candle's really in here. Now I'm speeding this up, guys, because right now I would stop on this painting. Let me making that candle, drawing that candle. Don't do what I say. <laughs> Don't do what I do. <laughs> oh my God, I see that. Oh. Okay, I can't stand that. I'm going over here. See, all this is what happens. I go too far, and then I'm going to get rid of this. Now, too much of this. No, too much. I spend more time taking it off. Okay, so this, I'm going back to this. You see how it may be confusing for you that my mind is so crazy? But there has to be, again, that motion of jumping from one color to the next. Now, there's, there's a mark, that little green, and there's a mark. And I like that now. It's, it, was, it evolved from a larger line, right? Okay. Now, I'm going to break this line up. And I'm going to break it that way, and then I'm going to go through this way, and maybe a little bit here, and just leave a little bit here. And this white is just too white, but that will disappear eventually. That's the other thing. Patience. Patience, patience. Leaving it there. Like, letting it live for a little longer than you might want to. Um, and just... Living, even if it's the ugliest thing, that's, that's really a challenge. And it's a really good idea to, to make a mark, an ugly mark or an ugly color, and let it stay there. Um, that goes against what I said last week, which was as soon as you know something's wrong, fix it. <laughs> but, okay, so this is the candle. This mark is going is going to now be made into this round thing. See? See how that happens? So there's many ways to make a line, right? You can draw the line, right? You can make a line by changing the color. Let's see. We'll do this right now. You can make a line by So, I'm making a line here by changing the color and the light so that the line is made from the brush, okay? Um, that's really important. So, it could be light and dark. It could be color or a completely different color to make the line. You can draw the line which is like an additive thing. And then, of course, you can make a line by scraping it off. Where's that tool that I, here we go. You can make a line with this or anything, okay? Like that. So using a variety of that, instead of just drawing, 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 or, yeah, so now, that's beautiful. Just that, right? And I, I'm just going to leave it there for the moment because there's something in that that is beautiful, which I said don't get in, don't get uh, stuck on something that's beautiful. But if you're willing to change your whole painting to like maybe this painting isn't about what I think it's about. <laughs> Maybe this painting is going to be something more about this, which to me is just beautiful. Uh, just as a little abstract painting, but okay, here we go. So maybe, you know what, that is inspiring me to do something right here. I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to make a line here.
this is this is how I paint, right? I have no idea what it's gonna look like. I have no plan. Okay, so I'm I'm looking at this this what's going on over here. I kind of want it to happen here. So this is the table edge, right? So I'm gonna make it, and then I'm gonna. <laughs> years. Okay, this line's going to be here. And here. Okay, so then, okay, there's the line, right? Now I'm going to go in, like I did up there, because I want to have echo this language down here. So, For about 20 minutes like really look at it and see and and when you see something when I see something that I know isn't working like okay take note what's working what's not working I think in this painting right now there's just too much activity that it needs to be simplified um, and I'm also sensing that there's something in this space that I don't like, this shape right here. So I don't know if this needs to go down or this is going to go up. I, I need to take my time. But I like the idea of the circle and this happening inside. So let's, we'll look at that, this painting on Sunday. And, Go a little farther with it. All right. Oh, thank you, Silas. Okay, my darling daughter Emma, <laughs> and my darling doggy Suni, who's so in love with her. When she poses, it's hard to get him from. He wants to sit on her lap all the time. Okay. Um. Do you want to come from behind here or no? Do you, is this the right position? Um, I have no idea, but it's perfect. It's perfect. 
the, this from over here is just incredible. Because uh, people could see behind me the painting and the earth at the same time. Wow. You know, when I paint her, my whole heart just starts pounding. And I, yeah, we were talking about that strength and that hardness. But when I see her, who is one of the most strongest women I've ever met, too, my, but I'll, yeah, I'm going to cry. The love, the respect. Don't make me cry. I, now she's crying, right? Yeah, so really different. Really different. I, I want I want to make this painting about love. Love and light. Love and light. So whew. Oh. it's it's interesting because you can't I, I don't want to make a precious painting but the feeling is that she's so precious but really I'm going to tap into her her strength and her movement she can dance like no other <laughs> and I want to bring that that force of nature she's a force of nature <laughs> she is um, so that's that's what I want this painting to be about, love and light and that force of nature. So here we go. Wow. This goes like this. I'm just going to paint for a little bit and not say anything. I think you can see what I'm doing here. Mm. Back to the back and forth. Trying to change this white up a little bit, right? Right. There's that. There's that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, so this needs to be scraped. I don't like this color right here. Oh gosh, this is wax all over this thing. I'm gonna just get rid of some of this here. been looking at this painting all week and uh, so many boony buddy boy go lay down go lay down leave your sister alone <laughs> okay yeah okay it's right here Oh, look at that it's arm and that hand. Okay. And then the leg. I mean, I literally can hardly paint this right now. It's, here we go. Now I'm just using a light line, a light blue line, and I, I, it would be great if I could explain to you everything I do, but and and why I do it. And that goes back to that question of, um, he's okay right there now. It goes back to that question of impulse and control. And uh, being in between those two places. This is, uh, I have a lot of paint out here right now. I tried to order paint. Okay, here's, here's her head. See, I made that long line just to break up that space, and then I'm going to find her head by painting around it, not just on the head itself. is down here. See, there's this dark thing up there with her hair. Let's get that in there right now. 
That dark shape. Shit. Oh, Emma. shake her head at me because she's I'm embarrassing her. <laughs> okay, let's show that this head this neck is down here. There's her arm. There's her head. Okay, so over here I'm gonna light this. I think I should lighten it. I think it should be light, 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 light. I, I don't know what it should be. Right now I kind of I'm really just like trying to read. Right <laughs> but you know, the thing is, is I'm afraid. I just realized what's going on here. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of not getting it. <laughs> I mean, the being I feel desperate. <laughs> That's the worst thing that I can feel. Working from a place of desperation. Whew. I, mm. It's because I want it so bad. <laughs> I really want this. And that is only going to, I have to let go of that. Mm, I have to let go of that feeling and just paint. Just paint. Yeah, painting out of desperation, you know. And this this thing about there's times when I can't paint at all. I mean literally everything I paint just turns into hell, basically. And I don't have control over that when it happens. When I can paint well and when I can't paint well. It's like this gift, this spirit. That's why it's important to paint every day as much as many hours as possible because that force, that that spirit, that that gift that comes in, that comes through me and allows me to just joyously make a painting. This is shoulders too short now. Oh. Um, it only happens once in a while. It's it's the gift of the spirits, right? So when it's happening, and I've kind of had it lately, I, I have to say that I have felt really good in here. Uh, there's months where it makes me, every day it makes me sick. But in order to have that gift come, you have to spend hours and hours and hours. Okay, so this fake, okay, watch this. Okay. I think I might try to get it with scraping. I don't want to paint her face exactly. I want to, where's my scraper? In my hand right here. Oh my God. That happens all the time. I'm looking for a tool, I'm looking for a tool. It's right in my hand. <laughs> right in my hand. It reminds me of when I was, you were little and I just kept carrying you and I'm running with the other boys, the three, there were three brothers. And then all of a sudden I'm like, where's Emma? Where's Emma? And she's like right in my arms. <laughs> okay, here comes the face. Okay. The face. There's a portrait right here I did of her uh, last year. Uh, I love that portrait because I feel like her, her hair is just alive. She's definitely a great model. See how I'm trying to get her face in there? I, I want this painting to be abstract, right? Like, I do not want it to. I really, and that's what I'm afraid of. See, okay, now I know what I'm afraid of. 
I really want this painting to just arrive here. <laughs> I don't want to control it or manage it. <sighs> How do you do that? I see now I am painting her face. There's the neck, dark. Comes down here. Arms is here. Her shoulder comes here. Her chin down here. This hair. Oh gosh. You know. Yeah, I talk about strength and being powerful, but really, <laughs> you have, I, I have to be able to live in, in a very vulnerable situation <laughs> because I'm scared. Sunny, what you doing, Sunny Booney? You got your bone? You found a bone, baby boy? Good guy. <laughs> He's being good. Normally, he just wouldn't let you sit by yourself, would he? I know. He's being real good. My doggy doggy. Someone asked, how do you balance rules and honesty? Well, first of all, there are no rules. That's why I love painting, because I don't like rules. <laughs> I know we need them in this world, but <laughs> to, to, to get along and not you know, go crashing in together. But um, yeah, there's no rules. As you see, it's all contradictions here. Uh, maybe if you're talking about the truth as rules, but to me, rules are not the truth. So. That's what I have to say about that. Can you just explain about the oil paint and the wax again? Okay. Um, so this is just basically the Dorland's wax. It comes in a gallons like this. I mix I say half and half, but it's usually 25% paint and then 75% oil. But again, it's up to you. You need to, if you want to do this, you need to experiment. Um, experiment with that. And why I use it is another, okay, so this goes all the way here. It's down here. Look at this beautiful, beautiful girl, woman. <laughs> This, guy, this face. Can I see sauce? I have to look in the mirror. Oh, yeah, here she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> okay, so I can't stand it. I have to go with that face. I'm going to go into that face. Oh, gosh, help me. I just have to find her. I have to find this. Because she's not going to be here tomorrow. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, too much drawing on the face. And then I just did this. I'm doing the face. Look at every, like I said, there, this is the work. This is not what I'm supposed to do, but right now I just want to get that. What is it? Yeah, okay. So down to her, down. Where's happening down? Oh, Emma, I'm going to tie you to that chair for the rest of the day. <laughs> beautiful hands. This arm right here. Beautiful arm and the hands, and this arm coming in here. Shadows are all different colors. This is see now I'm painting with the form, and again, my mother's gonna love me saying this, 
against the form, and it's true, especially when you're painting the figure and their limbs, you want to paint against the form. And so that's what I need to do right here. Okay, now I need to paint outside and then come back in like this. Okay, I need to get down here because a time, time, time. This is what happens with live painting though. Um, I mean, painting from life. You can't control. There's so much in, but I highly stay away from photographs. Photographs are, should be photographs and painting should be painting. Um, Cheryl asked, do you think that um, talking during painting affects your painting compared to being silent? Well, that's, hey Cheryl, thanks for the charcoal and the gloves you dropped off. You are a wonderful friend and a great painter and I love you, thank you. And the answer, what was the question? <laughs> do you think that talking during a painting affects it versus um, being silent? I would, well, when, if there was nobody in here, I talked the whole time. I talked to the painting, I talked to the painting, I yell, I scream, I'm like, please, and then I'm like, and I'm like, okay, no, no, this is okay. Yeah, I talk to it, like it's a friend. And then, like a friend, there's times to be quiet. And sometimes I don't say anything. I, we don't have any music anymore, because you can't do that on Google, put music on, but rarely do I use music. Um, I think music while painting, it, the music is such a strong influence unless it's about that song or that type of music. Um, I don't really want that influence uh, inf influencing my painting. So look at that. Okay, so these hands, are, this, this is, okay, right here is the other part of the white. Oh, God. This is, you know, this is, it's heaven and it's hell. It's <laughs> It's heaven, it's heaven, and then it's just hell because, you know, at any moment I could just destroy this. This is the little bit of white that's right here. I'm going wet over wet, which I tell you not to do, but, and this is that thing. Okay, so I, I feel like I want to just, I'm going to put her chest in here. I was going to leave that white, but I'm going to put that color of her skin right there now. Someone asked a question about creating skin tone colors. Oh, that's, well, the problem is there's so many different colors uh, in the skin, right? Some people have very green. Okay, that's a nice color. I think this color is grayish, but it has a little bit of light in it. Let's just see, Let's see what happens here. Okay, so this is gonna be kind of a bigger space. So skin tone. Uh, you know, skin tone is just another color. It can be anything that you want. The skin, could, the skin could be this color, right? It could be green. So, skin color. Don't worry about that. Just worry about the color that you make. Okay, bang. There's that shoulder. I'm trying to get, okay, I see, I'm down, I gotta get down here. Oh, well, Emily, um, you're not going anywhere today. <laughs> Can you believe I get to do this all day, every day, anytime I want, pretty much? I feel like the most blessed person in the world. And I'm, I'm just so grateful. I just feel really grateful right now. I'm not, I'm gonna get rid of this a little bit, you know. And this, this color here is darker. I made her arms, it's funny, I don't, but I don't mind, I can just stick with this for a minute because the white, no, okay, let's just do this. Let's do, let's do something big. You know, I always like to end, is it almost time, time? Uh, yeah. It's always nice to stop end with the biggest mark possible every time you leave the studio.
the biggest marks at the end. Uh, just so that when I come back, it has the spirit of being new. And this is here. And this is her arm here, the white coming around. I will do this. This is so pretty. Doing that white thing. Remember the series we did of you and all those white dresses? Yeah. yeah. That was such a fun time. Okay, let's see if I can get back to this. Where is that white dress? It's in your house. Oh, the painting is in your house. No, what? the dress. The white dress. Which dress was that? What dress was that? I don't know why I'm not going more. Oh, I know. That's why. So the the light here. That's what. That's what's messing me up. Okay. So up here though, it's it's much darker. Just a lot of green. A lot of green. A lot of red. What's my screen? Your color. Yeah, you have a lot of red and green, which is beautiful. But the light is a. Uh, it's like a blue. I don't know if this is going to be too dark. Let's just see what happens here. I'm really not. I'm just going to go for it. That's the other thing, too, is you just have to keep going for it. Because what am I to be now? Look at me. Like, I'm going to just do it. And then if it's not good, I'll just fix it later. <laughs> I'm just going to go for it. Why not? What, what the hell am I waiting for, right? Bang. This little face comes like this. Oh, look at that. Oh, and see how high that shoulder is? I'm sh <laughs> There's a lot of things wrong with this painting right now. And again, you I can't fix it all at once. There's that shoulder. And this face is up here like this. There's that shoulder. It goes down like that. <laughs> It's almost, when I'm painting my models, which I don't even want to call them models because they're all people I love madly, um, but I feel like I'm touching it. Do you, do you almost feel like I'm touching you in a way when you see like, like a pat or something? Because yeah. Jen used to say she, she can almost feel it because I'm, I do. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Because it's, so 